So this shows you how to install a spiral tube, which is a good way of managing the tube and keeping it close to the robot for pin picking. So what we have here is two hose clamps. Uh, we've specified exact part numbers for all of these. This is a nice hose clamp that has upturned edges so it doesn't scratch the robot. One spiral tube. Uh, this is 12 mil thick Teflon tape that's very slippery. It's to protect certain parts of the robot. I've already cut some pieces of that. Two straight through push to connect. And optional, I have some PVC tape to uh, protect the robot. And some Velcro to hold down the rest of the tubing elsewhere on the robot. I've already cut off the two ends, straight ends, because I need to keep this tube very tight to the robot. I really don't want straight pieces. I want it all to be coiled. So the first thing we need to do is to protect the rubber rings on the robot. I've already done these two, so you can see how the tape is applied. So these are the ru rubber rings on the first, second, and third joints on the wrist. We need to protect these because it's quite high friction and the tube will rub across it and actually damage the ring. So applying the PTFE tape or Teflon tape, simply a matter, you will notice there is a shiny edge to that. That is where the rotation takes place, right here between these two spots. So we want to cover that, but butt up just against the shiny edge of the joint. If you press down the tape well, it'll adhere quite well. 12 mil tape should last indefinitely. So we come all the way around the joint very carefully. The tape deforms a little bit, so you can actually stretch it into place a little bit. Now you'll notice that I have overlap here. We don't want that. This edge is something the spiral tube will catch on. It'll either bring the tape loose or it will um, abrade the, the spiral tube. So what I do is I double cut it. This is an old wallpapering trick where you cut through both layers of tape, remove one half, flip this one back, remove the other half, and now you can butt them up together very precisely. In fact, I don't like that one. It's my, a little bit off, but that shouldn't matter too much. And you can smooth down the edge and get a joint here that has no overlap. So I've done all three of these now. The next thing I need to do is put on the clamps. The clamps go, I'm using an electric screwdriver here just because I don't want to spend all my time unscrewing these clamps. The clamps go around the tube here and around the joint here. So we have a bridge across the, these two joints with the spiral tube and then a separate bridge across these joints, or this last joint. So the first thing I do just to protect the robot's beautiful finish a bit is to put some PVC tape around it. Now I'm putting this slightly inboard of this, this is, this is not really a joint, but I'm somewhat up the arm. And then this one also has to be somewhat inboard because the clamps are gonna hold down this straight through connector. We don't want it to overlap the joint. We want it to be back here a little bit. So these are not critical for the overlap, so I'm just gonna cut it off somewhere here. And same one. I'll try to make it look pretty by putting it right up against that piece of PTFE tape. To there. Next, we have to put the two clamps on. We'll attach them loosely so that we can uh, slide the straight through connectors over them later or under them later. This one typically goes on top. I like putting the the worm drives in board very close to each other right here and right here. That seems close together but the tube tends not to go there and it won't collide with each other. It's a spot where the robot should never run into 
that worm drive. So for the starter, I don't have to put it in any particular place. I'll rotate it. I'll just get it started a little bit just to get it to slide around. Same for this one. No, just enough to keep it in place. Now I have my two straight through connectors. Like I said, I like to keep that there. So I'm gonna put the straight through connector on top of this arm. So it's approximately here. And the other one, um, like to put approximately here, but also on top of the arm. So now it's just a question of tightening them, tightening them down. Let's start with this one. You may not want to make it super tight to start with. Give it a little bit of wiggle. You can tighten the, fi the final tightening later. This is just makes it easier to slide the tube in. Eh, maybe a little bit over here. So, still has some wiggle room. So, so we're using this end effector. Now, the spiral tube really needs a right angle on this to keep it tight to the robot. You don't want it looping out and coming back. You want it to go straight up. So this is a straight out connector. I'm going to swap it for an elbow connector. Now, it's, these are generally already ha are taped. This one has a rubber O-ring, so I don't need any Teflon tape. It'll create a nice seal all by itself. Um, this one is made by Festo. It's important to find a right angle, a, an elbow that swivels freely. Many don't, so be careful that you have the right one. Festo is one of them. This allows the spiral tube to move back and forth. It just gives you some extra freedom to keep the tube close to the robot without kinking or binding. So we can just have a, I'm gonna just spin this on just so that it's in the right place. Okay, keep that loose for now. As you can see, this has a nice spiral, nice uh, spin to it. So the tube needs to go from here to the connector over here. And then that gets connected to the final vacuum tube connection to the vacuum, tube, vacuum generator. Now, I'm we want to bridge this in two halves because this tends to be still fairly long and get away from the joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it part way through and bridge two joints with the first two thirds of the spiral and the last joint with the second two third, second third of the spiral. So this one doesn't need very much. It needs one, two, three, maybe four loops. Cut it insert it make sure you insert it really f well in this one actually this is a um one two three four five six seven eight nine. this is about a 20 loop spiral we only need about 18 or so so i'm actually going to cut a few out experience has shown us that it's tighter this way on a ur5 robot you might need all of them for a ur10 and we insert that one into this connector so now we have a nice tight connection to the robot. We can, you can see that it can go through all kinds of gyrations and the tube will stay close to the robot. It will rub against the robot joints here, but it will take a long, long time to wear out. Over months, you might see some dust accumulate and over the course of a year or more, the tube might wear out, but it's a very cheap item. It costs less than $10 and replacing it it's just a matter of pulling it off and plugging in a new one. It's a 30 second operation. Now we've done that, we do the final tightening. It doesn't have to be ridiculous, but make sure the 
post clamp bends a little bit. So it forms around the uh, straight through connector a little bit. And then finally, we just plug in the rest of our vacuum system. We can use the Velcro to connect that the regular way to the robot. You will still have to leave a bit of a service loop around the elbow. So this is a fairly normal, what we suggest is you put one at this end of the, up the outer arm, the, uh, I guess what we call the lower arm. Leave a bit of a service loop here. This tends to not catch on things. It tends to be well out of the way of the sensor or the fixture or any other part of your work cell. You'll have to use some experience to decide what the right amount of loop is. This is a bit much, maybe that's enough. You can also use a spiral across this. Use the same techniques, the same type of interconnect. You can run a spiral across this joint. You can run a spiral all the way down to the end if you like. So once we're done with all of that, We have a nice tight system that keeps everything close to the robot. The swivel here allows it to this to completely twist all the way around to the limits of the robot joints. This is fine. This is normal. We like to see it. We, this you, doesn't get too stressed. It won't wear out. It won't get stuck. And as you can see, it's easily replaceable. That's it.